Hello everyone and welcome to my next reaction to Supernatural. So just so you guys know, I am very, very sick. I am recovering from a very, very nasty cold and I actually had to postpone some filming uh, that I was going to do because I actually, in the past couple of days, I lost my voice and on top of that I was feeling really, really awful. Uh, today, I felt like I could probably film a little bit, um, even though I'm not feeling 100%, and uh, I feel like my voice kind of sounds still sort of scratchy and weird and sickly and all of that. Um, you know, um, uh, it's better than when I literally lost my voice and, you know, uh, couldn't talk at all, but, you know, it's still not 100%. So just so you guys know, if I seem a little bit off in this reaction, or not as animated as I usually am, or whatnot, that's why. Um, but I have a, I have faith that I can uh, film this one, and hopefully the next episode's reaction, and uh, at least get that done, um, and kind of slowly but surely get back on track. So... Uh, that's what's going on today for me personally, and uh, I'm. that doesn't mean, just so you guys know, if I kind of seem a little off, that doesn't mean that I'm not super excited to watch this next episode. So, without further ado, let's get into it. It's on the menu tonight. Meatloaf! Really? Again? I wish you wouldn't say that. You know how hard I work all day, and yet you criticize me. Hmm. Oh, oh my! Oh my! Oh my! So yes, we're having meatloaf oh. with potatoes and broccoli. That was really serving cell block potato. Like really. And then he ran into my knife. He ran into my knife ten times. <laughs> or however many it is, I forget. <laughs> See, because ever since you killed Magnus, you've been acting sort of Obsessed. Mm. Maybe because I wanted an end to all this. Maybe because if we find Abaddon, it probably ponies up the first blade and we kill her and both. I get it, Dean. I'm just checking in. I'm fine. To be fair, I definitely think it's absolutely um, normal, or I wouldn't be surprised. Oh boy. Oh boy, Dean. Oh boy. Um, if he was getting singularly focused or obsessed or, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not the craziest thing. But, given he has the mark, that's what I, you know. It says here in your report. Is what's first making see you and I as viewers worried, I assume. <laughs> oh, Lord. <gasps> oh, whoa. That bottle got a lot emptier. I the mark, Dean, if it's what you truly want. Can I use it to kill that bitch? Yes. But you'd have to know with the mark comes a great burden. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey! I didn't know this was your ride, Mr. Richie. Let's get you out of the cold. Be with you in a minute, Bill. Billy, what are you doing? Your mother raised you in a barn? Don't! Talk to me like that. Oh! What's he in you? You, my mom, him. Oh! Buddy. <laughs> him! I'm gonna call your mom. Have her come fetch you. No, you're not. Joke! Oh my word! Oh my word! Okay. And where do they all come from? Oh, well, they're all locals. Four of the straightest aerials you'd ever meet. Apparently they've been acting like this for days. What are you, Billy? Why are you doing this? You think there's a lie? No. It's because I want to. And I can. It's like the littlest things can set them off. Kinda like me. You got no instinct. I mean, you are seriously messed up. <laughs> Yeah, uh, soulless me. Remember that? Yeah, how could I forget? So what? Crossroads demon, 
making deals and taking people's souls. That would be very so interesting. interesting. Well, that was my best way. Well, I hope not, Dean. I, I can really use your help down here. Dean? Yeah, no, I, I heard you. I just, uh... I'm getting close, Sam. I can't drop the ball on Abaddon right now. Oh, right. no. You're lying to Sam like he's your wife. Oh! Hi, Crawley. Shh. Kind of makes me a mistress. Ay, ay, ay. Now listen to me, young man. Those demons are back. I'm telling you, it's happening all over again. Demons? Yes, demons. Are you deaf? Now, do you need a ride home or something? Don't patronize me, a little turd. <laughs> oh, I love. You're one of them, aren't you? Sorry about who? Men of letters. <gasps> they came here. Whoa! Good evening, sister. We're here from the office of the Inquisition. Oh! Okay, okay. Whoa, okay. <laughs> How did you feel when you sunk the first blade into Magnus's head? Not ever as good as I'm gonna feel when it's yours. Ooh! Love it when you talk dirty. Yet. I think you felt powerful. They were and afraid. Afraid? No scammer scam artist, darling. You're storming. Because you're scared. Did you know them? Yes. Um, sort of. It's complicated. I'm an ex nun, sweetie. Complicated is my middle name. Hmm. Now, what were they here to investigate? I already kind of like her. Sister Mary Catherine. If anything would happen to me, what if John, Millie, they'd be proud to know that you answered the call. No, my wife would be a widow and my son fatherless. I don't expect you to understand. You don't have a family. I'm sorry, Josie. I didn't mean it that way. I know, Henry. It looks ancient. Is it Bakra or Sanskrit? No, it's, it's pre Enochian. Knights of Hell? Simundus spiritus, omnis satanica potestat, omnis legio. Oh, 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 oh. Oop. You hunters are always sticking your noses in where they don't belong. Oh! Wait, what are you doing? I'm trading up from this bag of bones to Mr. Dreamy here. Don't drop it. Or what? Take me. <gasps> Not him. I could be more useful to you. People underestimate a woman. No. You love him. He loves you too, you know. Like a sister. Abaddon takes what she wants. And right now, she wants everything. Wow. We did it. Oh boy. We stopped the demons. Wow. Oh. Nothing like Kane. Nothing like. Who are you talking to? I know you're not talking to me. Not me. I saw you. I saw the two of you together. Nothing like it. What's in that bottle? Delusion? You really start to worry about you, Dean. I think I'd like to take a leak, so move. I'm Dean Winchester. And I know a hunter when I see one. You don't want to do what you're about to do. Any other day, I'd be right there with you, brother. I would, okay? But you gotta trust me on this one. Or you could grow a pair and come with. Okay, to <laughs> Yeah. 
So if you want to do that, if you want to damn anyone and everyone you've ever loved, in the slightest chance that you can win, then by all means, pal, you go right ahead. I got a good sister. She don't deserve that. What's your name? Jake. Good to meet you, Jake. The demons don't take leaks. Next time you want to shoot up, why don't you find a better excuse? Woo! Guilty as charged. After very little soul searching, I decided to embrace my addiction. What about you? Uh... You just want to touch that precious again, don't you? Crowley? I want to kill Abaddon. So the plan remains the same. I find her, you bring the blade. It's a day. Crowley, you know I normally really live for you, but you get you, you, a it's little... Second there, I thought Shush. he made me. Oh! He has other things on his mind. But he did do exactly what you said he would. He saved you. Of course he saved me. We're besties. We're besties. And now, mm -hmm. he's ready. Crowley and not Moose taking on the world. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is gonna go terribly. But I'm also living for it, so, you know. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, shit. Okay. You think Abaddon's just gonna sit there while those panty wasted demons refuse to pick a side? Oh. So she made a plan. Okay, so if she's. Convince him, make him. Building a super crazy army. She's turning souls into demons. Woo! Demon army. Unbeatable, loyal, only to her. Well, uh, at this rate. That's <clears> terrifying. <throat> Do you think I'm the only one doing this? Oh no! We have factories spread throughout. Right now, Tara, can not take any Please! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Oh, okay, well there there's that too. I was gonna say, I assume it will, like, try to find the right person. Person. Sorry. <laughs> <I'm> sick. <laughs> but this plan is terrifying. <laughs> Just. I wanna throw that out there. Can I ask you something? If it's for a date, I'm sorry. I never see anyone under 65. Too much drama. <laughs> Spit it out. I love her. Why didn't you warn Henry about Abaddon? I became a nun because I wanted to help people make a difference. They never tell you how to act in the face of true evil. For the safety of all those involved, it's important that we keep what happened here today. Yeah, she was oh, she was scared and oh soon after I left the order why because I was ashamed I had betrayed our flock God myself it wasn't still as my greatest shame oh oh wow well what you shared with me saved lives and I couldn't have done that without you Take care. Oh, my word! Oh, that was... Very emotional. Oh. We saved lives today. We made a difference. It's a noble calling, isn't it? I mean, yes, there's risk, but gosh. Well, I feel like a whole new person. Like, yeah. Oh, boy. You were right. About what? 
finding Abaddon, Asa. She's mining souls. Why? It's great an army. Ooh, all right. Yeah, let's just sit in this moment. It's uplifting. Yeah, her plan is terrifying. Okay, but we'll get into it. Well, okay, guys, I really, really enjoyed that episode. Um, as I said at the beginning of the reaction, I may not have been as animated, although I felt like it was an episode that really kind of, like, sat in um, the emotions and the plot points and everything like that. There was a somber vibe to the episode, so I don't know that I, even if I wasn't sick, I would have been super animated, but um, I really liked this episode because there was a really good... Um, I feel like focus on different character developments um, and I'm going to try to go into it as much as possible. I'm going to try to be as concise as possible because I don't want to talk too much because obviously my voice is still a little shaky right now with the sickness. But um, I first want to talk about uh, this whole thing with Abaddon and this episode, I feel like it's just a confirmation of what, I mean, I, I already know, and I've already mentioned to you guys, but this, you know, war or battle for hell or whatever with, between Abaddon and Crowley is just such an interesting plot point for me, you know, and it's a lot of elements of how are they both, I think they're both formidable adversaries for each other. Um, and if you're really on this, to, you know, it's just, and, and both, how do I say this? Just both really fascinating characters to watch and to see what routes they're going to take for this. Um, and, uh, you know, um, Abaddon has, throughout this season, I feel like, established herself as a force to be reckoned with, 100% in a lot of regards. This new plan, or what we're kind of figuring out what she's up to, is terrifying. I mean, that was the first thing, and, and as, you know, Sam was kind of approaching all of the jars that had the souls in it and everything, I was kind of like, Wait, what actually is going on? And then as it was getting kind of more explained and everything, I was like, oh, this is, no, this is fucking terrifying. Okay, great, great. Um, and it's making her to be such a, a big threat. And then we have Crowley's side, who we all know he can get shit done too. He might be a little more fun and fancy free with it sometimes. I don't know if that's the best way to put it, but you know what I mean. He's sort of um, more impulsive, more he kind of thinks on his feet, I feel like, a little bit more. Not that he doesn't have plans. He has had plans. He has executed plans in the past, and they have gone well for him, at least. Not other characters, but you know what I mean. Um, but there is something that he's a little bit of a wild card in that regard. And I find them both just so fascinating to watch and it just makes me very invested in this um even though it's like whoever wins it's not really a win for uh you know sam and dean and probably humanity so there's obviously that factor into it as well you know uh you you the, the the devil you know, so to speak, but the, you know, the Crawley you, you know, and, you know, um, there's also a really interesting added element, which I'll get to with the, the Crawley and Dean dynamic right now, but um, I genuinely um, found that all really, really interesting, and I keep, it's just this confirmation that, like, this war or battle or you know, whatever you want to fight, whatever you want to call it, is really interesting to me. And I'm just, uh, I get excited when it's focusing, um, when episodes are kind of focusing on this, you know, power struggle, so to speak, and how they're both trying to, um,
maintain or, or claim the, the, the power that they, that they really want. Um, and because I feel like Crowley is such a big presence in this show, um, in, in regards of who he is and how powerful he is, but also in regards of how much I feel like the fandom actually has taken a liking to him, it was actually, it's actually really important to build up Abaddon so that it, it you know, just even storytelling wise, it seems like they're formidable matches for one another. I hope I said that as correctly as I could, um, but, uh, or to, to convey what I wanted to say across. Um, the whole thing with, um, I, forgive me if the name is wrong, Julia, I really liked her and I really thought that they did a wonderful job with her character with just such a short time frame. Um, a reminder that sometimes, you know, um, there's a lot in this show uh, about standing up to, to evil. And there's a lot in this show of bravely standing up to evil and it's still not really going your way. And it's still kind of, um, or standing up to what you, you believe is, is right or against what you think is wrong. Um, and there is just this moment, um, and, and I think it's a, it's a really kind of good reminder for the audience that there are going to be some people that are, are, are just going to be too scared to take on, you know, that to, to really speak the truth or warn Henry, so to speak. And I, I just really kind of liked that they showed that she made that choice, she regretted that choice, and in some regard, she kind of helped not make that choice again here with Sam. And I, I really loved that. I thought the performance was really, really good. And there was a lot of heart within her story that, that was a fairly short story to tell. Weirdly, for her character, it almost kind of reminded me, and you guys might think, I don't know if you guys will agree with this, but it reminded me of some stories kind of back towards the beginning of Supernatural. And what I mean by that is like, um, really character focused. And it was like, it was a start to finish about this character, about what she did in the past, um, and how that affected her, how much she regretted it, and how, you know, she felt compelled to like, go into that police station and, and be like, but this is this is how I um, this is happening again, and we need to do something because she was quiet once, and then she she helped Sam out and let him know what she knew and everything like that. I'm not saying that it's the episode had bigger implications. It was focusing on Crawley and and Dean's situation. It, it was focusing on Abaddon. This whole you could not say that this episode was a standalone episode. But for her specific arc, Julia, I, if if that's not her name, I'm so sorry. But for her specific arc in this, I felt like it felt complete, and it felt like one of the like I I feel like a lot of times. In the earlier, uh, earlier in this show, some of the standalone episodes had a lot of heart. Maybe it didn't have, you know, full context, but there was like these character studies that had a lot of heart. Um, and sometimes when we have standalone episodes now, they're kind of filler. They're not, they don't pack as much of an emotional punch because they're saving that for the, the more plot heavy episodes. Kind of just her story kind of reminded me of that. I know the rest of the episode didn't, doesn't really fall into that suit, but um, that she, her story did a little bit. Um, and uh, uh, to talk about Crowley and Dean, you know, Crowley's motivations with Dean and how he's acting with Dean, I think there's still more to uncover, still more to unfold. You know, like I said, you know, we've got two formidable forces and Crawley is, you know, as much as he's a little, you know, uh, I don't know that he's building the same type of army that Abaddon is, that doesn't mean he doesn't have a plan and that he's not trying to put things into motions and that into motion and that's all I'll say about that. 
What I will say about the Dean situation, obviously we're worried, I feel like collectively as an audience, for Dean to have this mark, for it to possibly corrupt him. I'm going to say something slightly positive, even though it seemed like in this episode we're really focusing on the fact that he might be struggling with it, obviously, um, and, you know, uh, fixating and trying to cope with it. The positive thing that I'm going to say, and it, it might sound kind of weird, I'm kind of glad that it is happening to Dean now, meaning later on in Supernatural, than a very early on in Supernatural Dean. I think Dean has been through a lot. The hell experience, to name one, but not, I mean, there's going to be others, right? But other experiences. And he's been, you know, kind of around the block with people under a kind of very supernatural influence that I think he's a little, he's aware. It doesn't mean that it's not going to get messy. That doesn't mean that he might not succumb to whatever this is. I mean, he got the mark and they're like, well, there's probably going to be consequences. And he was like, I don't care. Or did give it to me anyway. That's not exactly how that went. I'm very aware of that. But you know what I mean? Like, and, and you're just like, oh, there's going to be consequences. I think, yes, there's going to be consequences. I'm not really trying to say that. But I'm feeling better about it being this Dean having, who has gone through so much and who has understood, you know, um, the best way I can explain it, in, in, in all honesty, uh, I keep kind of going back to this a lot in my in my thoughts and everything, um, and sometimes I feel like, uh, I don't know, I, I think it's important, but, um, you know, when I was dealing with anxiety, um, when you're in it and you're feeling that anxiety, it is very hard to separate yourself and take yourself out of it and say, you know what, you're feeling anxiety. And it was almost like I kind of had to go through a lot of experiences with anxiety for me to be able to do that. Now, sometimes it, it works better than other times, but I have had moments in my life where I'm like, I'm feeling severe anxiety right now and I need to know that I'm feeling severe anxiety right now and have some perspective on it. And that is a very difficult thing to do. Why I'm bringing that up is I feel like that might be something that Dean is eventually able to do with the mark. Now, I could be wrong. I could be completely far off and just, you know, but I, I have this faith that Dean has been through so much and that I think eventually, and I think he's even struggling with it now, that he might be like, you know what? This, this urge I have, this maybe violent urge I have, or, or succumbing to this almost addiction, like Crowley was saying, right? Maybe that's not what I need to do in this moment. And he might have a moment like that, that you know. Um, but mainly my main point is that I'm, I'm much happier that it's a dean who's really been through a lot and have, has learned a lot about this kind of stuff. Um, dealing with this than an earlier Dean. Hopefully that made sense. All right. Um, I think that is about it. Loved this episode. Uh, if you would like to support me on Patreon or subscribe, I would really appreciate it. But if not, I'm just happy that you were here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.